Hey, what's happening, Herpers? I'm Herpin Hippie, and tonight I'm doing some herping at night and on foot and on a skateboard. So come along if you want to see how this adventure turns out. Now this is some good weather for herp, and we are finally getting into Arizona's monsoon season. And this is one of the times that reptiles become most active. Leading up to this season, it is very hot and very dry. So most reptiles go into a period called estivation. If you've heard of brumation during the winter, which is kind of the reptile version of hibernation, estivation is kind of the reptile version or really any animal that lives in a hot, dry, arid environment. It's the time of year where there's just no water to be found. So they go into a dormancy similar to hibernation, but instead of trying to wait out the winter, they're trying to wait out the heat until the monsoons finally come. And this week we have finally started getting some good monsoons, which means the reptiles are waking back up. Well, this is weird. This is some completely non-monsoon related flooding, and I probably shouldn't be sticking my hand in that because I know our parks use gray water, but that looks like a burst pipe and I am kind of looking around just to see if there are any reptiles coming up to sip from this. I kind of doubt it since we already got much better rain earlier today, but um, hmm, I wonder if there's a number I can call. This doesn't look good. And nope, no numbers, just some signs letting me know me, my skateboard, and my dog aren't welcome, so I guess they'll find that leak in the morning. But in all seriousness, it's a little after midnight, so even if there was a phone number, I don't know who I would call anyway that would actually answer at this time. And I see some wildlife, first wildlife of the night. And it's not a reptile, it looks like it's a rabbit about to have a heart attack, so I'm slowing down a little bit so he doesn't keep freaking out. I don't know why he doesn't just turn. Oh, alright, there he goes. I think he turned and... I wonder if he went down into the wash or over the bridge. Oh, neither. <laughs> he hid behind the dumpster and is still having a heart attack. And there he goes. All right, well, that's good. We know that the snake food is out tonight. Let's see if we can find some snakes now. I cruised around the park for a little while, kind of keeping my eyes off to the side of the sidewalk. Sometimes those will almost act like drift traps where a reptile will bump into a wall or bump into a sidewalk or some bit of pavement and then they end up just following it for a while. So I did a couple laps keeping my eyes open for snakes, but I didn't find any more reptiles or signs of life near the park. So I decided to ride to the end of the development and walk off into the desert to see what we could find off the trail. Well, do I do it? Do I go down the steep and brush covered hill in poor footwear? For reptiles, anything, let's do it. <laughs> Trying to figure out the best way to film after dark is bringing back some memories, but it's good to be out doing something new. So I just stowed my skateboard down there. I'm gonna get rid of the helmet and my gloves here as well. That way I can have my hands free for any herps that we might find. So I'm gonna get this helmet off and let the adventure continue. Stop the adventure, stop the adventure. <laughs> So I was just looking for a place to store my skateboard and some jumping choy I decided to jump onto my ankle. And right now I'm just using a rock to kind of flick off as many pieces as possible. It sounds silly, but one of the best pieces of outdoor kit that you can keep in your backpack while you're out hiking, in the desert anyway, is a comb because it's really great for catching the little spines of the needles and using it to flick it right out of your skin. What you want to do as soon as possible because these choya needles are a sort of vampire. The needles will actually start to engorge themselves on your own blood and as that happens they become harder and harder to remove and it's already pretty hard to get them out because there are little barbed hooks on the end of them which is why you can kind of see my sock and my skin giving some resistance to releasing these needles but the longer I leave these spines in there the harder they're going to be to get out so I got to just pick them all out now and do better watching where I'm going for the rest of tonight so that doesn't happen again. I'm also going to stow my skateboard helmet and gloves here. I've got them kind of tucked into the bush where hopefully nobody else will notice them and I will hopefully be able to find them when I'm done herping for the night and need to ride back home. And with that taken care of let's go look for some reptiles and try not to step on any more jumping choya. Keep my ears alert, there's a lot of insect noises tonight. I keep seeing little grasshoppers hopping in front of me. But just keeping my eyes peeled, really watching the edges of the trail. And I think I'm coming up to a wash here because the plant life is getting a lot more dense and a lot thicker. So, yep, here we have a decision. Do we keep following the trail forward? Explore up the wash. I'm gonna go up the wash tonight. 
<laughs> I guess comment down below if you would have preferred me to stick to the trail and maybe I'll go back out and film that option next. We can start making some choose your own adventure herping videos. And on that note, if you are enjoying this video and want to see more videos like it in the future, please go ahead and hit the like button to let me and the algorithm know that videos like this are worth making. Ever since I was forced to delete almost all of my content around two months ago, the YouTube algorithm understandably has not wanted to promote anything that I've made, which means for the time being, the survival of this channel is kind of in your hands. So please hit the like button if you haven't done so already, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that jazz. And if you know anybody who might enjoy these videos, please go ahead and share it with them because for the time being, that seems like the only way my videos are going to get shared. Oh, check it out. Do you see that? I see something moving. I see white and black. All right, so this is absolutely awesome. Ow, mosquito just bit me. So this is absolutely awesome. I just found a king snake and he is in the middle of hunting. So I'm gonna try to sneak up on him without disturbing him or ruin it for the hunt. But there's a little lizard that he is trying to, it looks like lure in with his tail. He keeps wiggling his tail around and this lizard is just outside of his reach. So I'm gonna try to get closer so you can see him too. Oops, and darn, the first thing I've got to say when I'm getting closer to him now is that I think I made a mistake. This is not a king snake at all. This is a different coloration than I'm used to seeing of the long-nosed snake. You can kind of tell the difference because of the striping on the nose. And I don't know if it'll come out on the camera, but long-nosed snakes actually have a kind of red, orangish colored iris. And that is the easiest way to distinguish a black and white long-nosed snake like this from king snakes that also have a black and white color pattern. And I am so happy we found the snake tonight because right now we are seeing some very obvious hunting behavior. That little tail twitch, that means he's getting excited. He thinks there's food nearby and you can see how he's putting his head down, continuously sticking his tongue out, trying to smell the environment, looking for where, oh, I think I just saw it. And let's play that back in slow motion because I barely saw this as a blue flash in the moment. And there it is in that hole in the left and bottom quadrant of the screen, a little lizard sticks his head out and then runs away for dear life. I feel kind of bad for disrupting this meal, but I've got a feeling that lizard was going to get away anyway. The snake was kind of sniffing up the wrong trail. But nonetheless, I'm going to keep my distance here, partly because I don't want to bother the snake anymore. I already screwed up a meal for it, but also because I don't want to end up covered in blood and poop, which is often what happens when you try to pick up a long nosed snake, because when they get scared, they'll actually stick out their cloaca expel a little bit of blood and usually poop whatever happens to be in their intestines on you to make them seem like a less appetizing meal so you let them go all right so he understandably got nervous when i got close to him but i hope i got close enough that you're able to see a little bit of what was going on there that was super cool to catch now i'm going to continue on and see what else we find old fallen saguaros like this are often a great place to check you can see how there are little gaps between all the saguaro ribs that are perfect for small snakes and lizards to slither their way in between and hide out in I don't know what it is about saguaro ribs in particular, but I have found more coach whips hiding under saguaro ribs than probably anywhere else I've found coach whips. Now, whenever I'm out enjoying nature, I try to tread lightly and not break things. So I'm gonna be careful not to bust up any of these saguaro ribs. I am gonna try to look down here and see if I can find any evidence of a snake in the area, but I don't wanna do anything like lifting up the whole saguaro and disturbing this hiding spot because this is a perfectly good shelter for all sorts of desert wildlife and I don't wanna ruin that. Ooh, and this has nothing to do with reptiles, but oh, there is some life down here. I see a bunch of little bugs. I don't think those are ants. Those might be some sort of termite. I'm actually not too sure, but what actually got my attention was this little quartz deposit. Quartz deposits like this aren't uncommon around the desert, but something that's kind of cool that I can show you since I'm hiking around at night is that when these rocks get clashed together, they actually produce a little bit of light. All right, continuing the hunt for scaly desert dwellers. I'm just kind of checking out these choya bones. It always cracks me up because you see these sold at almost every reptile expo, but I rarely find reptiles actually living near them when I'm out in the desert. But I guess I can't blame people for wanting them in their reptile enclosures because they are pretty cool looking. All right, on my way back now. And if you thought that finding the reptiles was the hard part of the night, well, it's not the easy part of the night, but the most important part of the night is finding my skateboard so I can make it all the way home without having to walk once I get back to the road. So hopefully I'll have as much luck finding my skateboard again as we did finding that first snake. Another hidden danger of the desert are these beautiful saguaros. You get distracted looking up at how incredibly tall they are and you're walking along through some grass. You think you're safe. And while you're distracted by the giant cactus off to your side, you miss the little cactus right in front of you that's gonna try to bite your ankles as soon as you get close to it. And somebody might be laughing right now going, really, he's warning you about the cactuses? What about the rattlesnakes? And yeah, you have to be alert that there aren't rattlesnakes hiding in the bushes too. 
But from experience, I can tell you just being aware of my surroundings, I have never accidentally stepped on a rattlesnake or gotten too close to a rattlesnake that I was bitten. I have more times than I could ever count gotten too close to cactuses and had to pick cactus out of my legs. So while the rattlesnake is surely the bigger concern, it's not something that's likely to happen and is hopefully not something that causes you to fear so much walking around in the desert that you don't do it and don't enjoy it. There you are. All right, and luckily a desert Bigfoot did not steal my skateboard, so I'm just gonna get my gloves and my helmet on and walk on back to the road. And then we'll see if we can find any more reptiles crossing the road on my way back home. So I'm passing back by the park that I had to go through to get out to the desert, and I'm hoping that maybe I'll find something in this area. I don't know if that leak is still going, but I know that the sprinklers do come on at night, and sometimes that does end up attracting some wildlife, so I'll see if I can find anything coming in to drink off of these sprinklers. Okay, here's something. I usually love seeing these guys, but this one doesn't seem to be doing too well, and I'm not too sure what's wrong with them. This is a Palo Verde beetle. These guys get their name from their tendency to lay their larva near the root systems of Palo Verde trees. The larva will then feed on the root system along with other plant matter, fruit, vegetation that they come across. And it usually takes them about three years to develop to this size where they eventually emerge from somewhere near their hiding spot near the Palo Verde trees they get their names from. And they only come out during the monsoon season so they can then go and lay their eggs in the root system of another Palo Verde and continue the cycle. Unfortunately, I don't know if that's gonna be in the cards for this Palo Verde Beetle. He seems very out of it. This one should be a male due to the fact that the wings fully cover the abdomen. If it were a female, I'd think maybe it just got through some rough breeding. It's not uncommon for these beetles to rip antennas and legs off of each other during breeding sessions. But this one's whole body is intact, which makes me think that we're probably seeing the effects of some sort of bug spray or other pesticide used near the park. I put him down because he started to open his wings like he wanted to fly. These guys are not harmful in any way. They do have some pretty big pinchers for boring through roots, but as long as you you're not putting your finger right up to them. They're not gonna bite you. And my skateboard's getting away, come back here. And I think that about does it for this video. That was all the wildlife that I found on this particular night of Perpin, but make sure to like and subscribe because we are finally out of estivation, the period when reptiles stop being active and firmly into the monsoon season when the entire desert comes to life. So I'm going to be going out both a lot more at night and during the daytime to look for reptiles. So if you want to see videos like that, let me know down in the comments. If you are bored of videos like this and want to see something else, well, let me know that too, because I'm here to make what you're interested in. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. I hope you don't ruin any meals for long-nosed snakes, but most of all, I hope that you keep herping.